the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. This is Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host, SKM. And that's just a guy live and direct is a artist from Cincinnati, Ohio, signed to Heartless Music. With no further ado, let's introduce you to Little Savage. Hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Hey, big dog. I want to tell you, man, it's an honor to have you, Little Savage. Man, you have a wonderful story, man. So let the audience know about your upbringing. What got you inspired to do music, man? Okay, what got me in, uh, inspired in my music was growing up listening to all the fantastic artists like Eminem, Lil Wayne, ICP, Twisted, you know, just really good artists that have meaning in their music. And it made me want to, you know, do something myself. And since then, you know, everything's been great. And I got a lot of supporters and fans right now. And I just find it a blessing that, you know, I found another hobby to do that, you know, helps me. So. All right, man. So tell the audience, man, how it was getting signed to Heartless Music, man. It was it was a blessing. You know, at first they they was called LKM and then they switched their name to uh, Heartless Music Records. And since I've been signed with them, they have got a lot of support on my side and they publish all my music on major platforms and They've actually been the reason why I've been getting a lot of views because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. Oh, okay. So they do your whole marketing and they uh, promote your music, right? Yes. And they're also helping me with my new t-shirt, which is called Lil Savage X, Savage God. It's coming out soon and everybody should grab one. All right, man. So this is the merchandise line you just started up. So let me ask you this. What was the process of doing this, man? Uh, I was online one day and I seen a blank t-shirt on Google and it was a black blank t-shirt and I said, Hey, you know, I'm gonna download this and I'm gonna try to make a clothing line for myself to see where that goes. And since I started, you know, doing the designing and everything to the t-shirt and then I published a t-shirt on Van Lab and Facebook and everywhere else. I'm actually getting a lot of likes on it, and a lot of people are commenting wanting to buy one. So I'm pretty sure they like it, so I did a good job. Hey, man, can we expect the website coming out? What did you say? Can we expect the website? Uh, the, uh, the website? Yeah, the website it's, that's a new merchandise line, man. It's actually going to be on Heartless Music Records' web- website. They're actually getting their website together now. And their website should be up uh, soon, and I will let everybody know when when they do have their website up. So, Little Savage Chicks, are you the only one that signed to Heartless Music, or do you have other artists out there that the audience may can check out? Uh, There's actually a few. There's a lot of artists signed with them right now. Actually, the one artist that's getting pretty big right now, his name is Kid Slayton, NBA. Uh, He's pretty good. Um... I would actually definitely check him out. I've actually did a collab with him and we did great on the song. It's called Here We Go. Um, You guys should definitely check him out. And there's other artists signed too. You guys should check them out. Just uh, go to Heartless Music Record on uh, Band Lab or Instagram and you can check them out as well. All right, man. So, um, part of this visual that you are uh, signed to, man. I'm working with all these different artists, man. What is the vibe like, man? How did how did these projects come upon? Do you have a producer that makes these beats for you and you just go ham on it? Or how does it work, man? Well, sometimes I make the beats myself. Or, you know, sometimes I have another artist send a beat to me and that wants me to try it. Or, you know, I have my record label send me beats all the time. Like, you know, beats that, they, that I could use. And I just use it, and I roll with it, and my songs come out great. All right. So, um, were you making music before you got signed to, I mean, well, we know that, but, I mean, like, before you got on social media, were you making music, bro? Yes. I've been making music around nine or ten years uh, before I've been signed. Um, I actually was in a band before called Shattered Soul. It was an underground rap band. 
uh, with my cousins. And soon as they, uh, soon as they like kind of split their separate ways, I went my separate way. And, you know, it, it seems like my career is going off better than what I was with them. So, you know, it, it kind of makes me feel like the group was holding me back a little bit. All right. So you didn't like that, didn't you? No, I, I didn't like, I didn't like that. I didn't like that they was taking long about their process and publishing and sharing their own work. And I also didn't like it. They, they was arguing too much about who goes first in a song or and it was just, it was just really <laughs> annoying. So I was like, you know what, I'm about to go, you know, my separate way and see what happens there. And next thing you know, I get signed and I have a lot of followers and I have a lot of views on my songs. Yeah, man, that's great, man. So, um, wow, man, just going through this uh, transition of it, it turning into uh, on a turning into a bigger platform, man, and having this much um, support on your on your team, man. Like, how does this change the game for you? It, it changed it. It changed my life. It changed everything that I know about myself. Uh, it, it changed a lot of things for me. It, it made me open my eyes to realize what I can do better in life. Uh, because, you know, I've had a rough background and, you know, I've went to jail a few times and, you know, I've, I've lost, you know, some family members that really meant the most to me. And since I've been doing music, it changed a lot. You know, it, it made me, it made me want to do more for myself. It made me want to, you know, get other people to listen to what I've been through and they can relate to it. All right, man. So, um, so being a going in and out of jail, man, or uh, being brought up to a rough upbringing, how did this affect your life, and how did this, how does this affect your music today? Uh, it, it affects me because you know the criminal background that I that I've had. Uh, you know, it, it was. It was hard to get a job. It was hard to, you know, it was hard to find a place to live. It was hard to do a lot of things. And uh, since, you know, I've done music, you know, it still affects me to this day, you know, thinking back, you know, wow, you know, it's hard for me to do this. It's hard for me to do that. But, you know, I found another way to make myself happy, and that's with doing music. All right, man. So, um, how how has music impacted your life? The music has impacted my life in a lot of major ways. It's it's impacted my life. You know, it showed people that didn't believe in me to believe in me that I can make something of myself, and it's it's made me believe in myself. You know, it, it made me want to keep going and keep going, and, and it's really been a major impact and support throughout my life. And I would never take music away for nothing. I've always will do music. I don't care if I'm 80 years old, I'm going to write a song. You know, I'm always going to be that musician that everybody wants to listen to. That's amazing, man. So um, what is the mindset going into 2021? My mindset going into 2021, that's to make the whole world know who I am. That's to let them know that I'm here and I'm not just... Damien, I'm not just the guy that, you know, was getting in and out of trouble. I want 2021 to be special for me, and I want to get recognized even more. And I want to bring my music to major, more major platforms. I want to actually perform in bigger, bigger arenas and, you know, concerts. And I just want to get myself out there more. That's my main focus. All right, man. So um, by this project, Savage God. When is it coming out, and what can we expect? Is there any special collaboration that you have on this album? Yes. Uh, the CD itself is supposed to be coming out in December, December 12th. And the special collaboration that's on the track, uh, that's on the CD, would be uh, Mary Blaze. She's actually really good. She's a Van Lab artist. And everybody should check her out. She's she's wonderful in what she does and she's a good uh rapper and singer and you know i don't regret anything making music with her she's actually made my music better wow man so um being able to um work with artists like that um how has band lab affected your life man 
It basically opened me up to a lot of things. It opened me up to more music. It opened me up to more beats. It opened me up to, you know, good supporters and fans. And BandLab has really been a good starter for me. And so I know as soon as I get on BandLab, there's going to be somebody coming my way that's going to make my song better or at least, you know, try their hardest to do what they can. And I support everyone on BandLab. And I'm a fan of everyone that makes music on Band Lab. All right, man, that's dope. All right, so um, tell us a little about Audio Mac, man. Audio Mac, uh, my record label released my uh, song on Audio Mac. It's uh, the CD Savage God. We was just talking about that. It has I'm a God though on it. It has uh, When Should I Stay on there. It has Insanity Part Two on there, and it has Survive on there. And those are four of my most greatest songs uh, in the past that I've done. And um, I think that everybody would love to go to Audio Mac and listen, like, and share. Uh, Audio Mac is a good platform to use. It has a lot of people that views your work on there. So I encourage other artists to get themselves on Audio Mac. So um, how did you discover Audio Mac and... um... What is it like? Like, do you network with other artists on there, or is it just something where you just hit play and you listen to the song and you rate it, or maybe you favorite the the artist? I don't know pretty too much about um, Audio Mac, so if you could elaborate for the audience, man. Yeah, uh, Audio Mac. Uh, I haven't collaborated with no artists on there yet. But I've heard there are some great art artists on there, uh, and I will do more search to find an artist on there that would be dope to collab with. But as of right now, my songs are just a play and share on there. Um, but you guys would definitely love the the songs that I have on there, and uh, please go listen. It'll help me out. Yeah, everybody go uh, share his music. Make sure... Um... You follow him because Little Savage Dex got good things in the works. He's working with a wonderful record label. Oh, man. So, upcoming video. Let's talk about that. Savage God. Let us know the releases of these visuals that you might be putting out. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. It's uh, Lil Savage X. That's my main one. And then I have Lil Savage X Topic, which is my label page. Uh need subscribers on there as well um they have like i said four of my greatest songs on there which is oh my god though and uh when should i stay surviving insanity uh but my other youtube just a regular little savage x youtube that has over 60 of my songs on there plus a short mini video song mix that i did on there which is pretty dope uh i've done a lot on youtube and uh you guys will find out as soon as you go follow me. All right, man. So, um, so are you going to have any, uh, upcoming music videos before the year ends, man? Like, are you going to have an like, actual I'm actually, video? Uh, for the yeah, I'm actually, uh, in process of shooting a video in December. Um, I'm actually going to shoot it at a grave site. Uh, it's going to be the I'm a God video, and it's going to be dope. My label is going to, you know, direct the whole video and do the audio and the recording and all that. Just uh, be on the lookout for that. It's going to be very sweet to watch. All right, man. So, um, so 2021, man, is the year that um, we can expect big things from you, man, like your videos your albums that are coming out, man. Man, is there anything that you haven't accomplished yet that you're still working on? Uh, I'm, the thing I'm working on right now is to make my music sound a lot better. Um, that's what I'm focused on the most, to make my songs be heard the most and, you know, played the most. And uh, I'm just working on the audio clarity of everything. And uh, once I get that and I start, you know, putting more of my stuff out there, you know, I'm going to pretty much blow up because, you know, I'm a good songwriter and I write good hooks to songs. And that's what I'm known for. And uh, a lot of people like 
the type of songs that I write. And I'm pretty sure in 2021, I'm going to make myself heard a lot more. All right, ma'am. So um, let's go to um, your live performances. Tell everyone what it's like to perform and what are your favorite venues? Is this like an open mic night? Are we doing talent shows? What are we doing, big dog? I have did a couple open mic nights. Uh, I've actually had a concert at um, Bogarts before. I've had a concert at uh, Mad Frog before. And uh, I've actually just did it myself. Um, I didn't have no collaborators on it. I just chose, you know, some of the songs that, you know, I did myself and not had a collaborator on. And I've had a lot of people actually like my music and jam. You know, they, they were sitting in the crowd and it made me feel really good. It, it actually warmed my heart to see people actually liking my music and wanting to be at the show with me, you know? All right, man. All right. So what was the last performance you've done? Uh, it was about, I'd say, six months ago. It was at the Mad Frog, and uh, I actually did really good. I've had, I think there was at least um a little over 200 people out there i i mean they were standing outside the building waiting to see me and uh some of the people couldn't even come in the building they had to stand outside and listen to the concert do you remember the songs that you performed yes i uh i sung i'm a god i did k9 i did um criminal i did dope boy snowman and i did uh when should i stay Wow, man. So this whole night was jam-packed with Little Savage Ed from Heartless Music Records, man. Yeah, it was It was very exciting. That's fucking dope to say, man, that I have an artist that came on my podcast has been as accomplished as you have. So, yeah. man, um, is there any other way that um, we could see you perform live. I know we're on the lockdown and all this COVID is going around, but man, let me ask you this, uh, for anyone that's interested in seeing you perform live, could we see you on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook? Would that be something you'd be interested in? Yes. I, I mean, I don't mind, uh, getting on, you know, alive and performing for the fans on there. Um, since, you know, we're not allowed to have the concerts and stuff all like that right now because of the COVID, but I don't mind getting on live and, you know, sharing my music and having concerts that way. I think it would really better myself and bring more followers. So I don't have no problem with that. All right, man. So, um, what would be the top, top 10 songs you would perform live? Uh, I'm a God, K9. Criminal, dope boy, snowman. You're my king. You're my queen. I'm your king. Uh, only gangsta in this bitch. Uh, this is me. I'd have to say everything went bad. When should I say insanity? And uh, the other one, I, the, the other one would have to be this is my beat part two. All right, man. So future collab. What'd you say? Future collab. Who was my collabs that did it with me? Favorite? No, bro. Future collabs, like future collaborations you got in the work that the people don't know. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> my bad. Uh, the, the collabs I got in the works, which is I'm actually working on a song, doing a song with this uh, artist called King Prophecy. And there's another artist called um, Maryland. Uh, which he's been on a few of my songs, but uh, I've had a lot of people say that we've collaborated a lot, you know, throughout my songs good, and uh, I think we should do more work together. He's a very good artist, and uh, I'm actually working on doing another song with Chris Brown. All right, man. All right. So you got any favorite collabs so far? Uh, my favorite collab would have to be Chris Brown or Justin Bieber, one of the two. Oh, hell yeah, man. That's dope, man. So if you could collaborate with any artist dead or alive, who would it be and why? It would have to be Eminem, man. He's one of my favorite artists, and I would love to do a song with him. I think that we could, we would put together a dope song, and I think a lot of the fans would like it. That's dope, man. So how are you different from other artists? 
I'm different because, you know, my my whole character in rapping, it's, you know, my I dress different um, with my sleeve that I wear on my right arm is actually not for my rap character. It, it actually had injured my elbow back in high school, and uh, that's why I wear the sleeves. But I kind of brought it forth to be like a trademark to my rapping game, so... You know, a lot of people ask me, why do you wear them sleeves, man? And I'm like, that's because, you know, I injured my elbow. But, you know, I I made it into a trademark. And a lot of people love the way I dress and the way I act and, you know, the way I brought forth my music. So, you know, it's working out pretty good for me. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So what is your message to the youth? My message to the youth is stay in school. Um do whatever you can to be all you can be. Um, dreams do come through. If you want to go out there and you have a dream, go for it. You know, stay out of trouble. Uh, listen to your parents. Do your schoolwork. And I promise you, I promise you, all that will pay off in the, in the future. All right, man. All right. So let me ask you this. Um, who is your music targeted towards? My my music is targeted for mainly, you know, the adult genre, but, uh, you know, it's, I got some songs that, you know, some younger youth could listen to, but most of my songs have explicit lyrics, so I don't advise the children to listen to them type of songs. That's what's up, man. All right, so, um, let me ask you this, man. Little Savage Ed. Man, um, favorite bar you ever spit on a verse, man? Favorite bar I've ever spit on the verse? That would have to be K-9. Um, uh, the first verse in that song, I just like how I came forth with it. And a lot of people tell me, they was like, man, that, that's got a lot of bars in it. You know, you, you got bars. And, you know, since I made that song, you know, a lot of people have been wanting to listen to my music and hear what other bars I have to throw. So, you know, it's it's really a good thing that, you know, I have good songs that I have that have good bars in them because, you know, most people's like, you know, some artists be, you know, just saying the same things over and over again. Well, you know, I try to throw more bars in my songs to, you know, make different you know, uh, deliver a different, you know, verse in every song is what, what my goal is. That's what's up, man. All right, man. So, um, what is it like growing up in Cincinnati, Ohio, man? What was the upbringing? It, it, you know, Cincinnati, Ohio, you know, I've had a rough life down here and, you know, as soon as I get out of here, as soon as, I, as soon as I move, you know, it's going to be a blessing because, you know, I've dealt with a lot over here. But actually, I think being in Cincinnati and going through the things that I've gone through actually helped me to be a better artist. So I can't really hate on it too much, you know. All right, man. Uh, toughest struggles you had to face. Toughest struggles I'd had to face was losing my brother Chris from brain cancer, uh, losing my wife. Um, basically, I don't get a lot of, you know, mother and father time. Uh, we don't, we barely even talk to each other. Um, it's just I've been in and out of jail. It's just a lot of struggles that I've been through that, you know, I try to hold back in my past that some days come back to haunt me. Uh, but I try to keep going through it and make the best music possible that I can make. Bro, what is it like um, living that kind of lifestyle, in and out of jail? Um, what was that struggle like, and did that affect you in your music in any type of way? Uh, it didn't necessarily affect, affect me in my music. It affected me with getting a job or getting a place to live, you know, landlords or you know managers at a job might look at your record and be like oh we don't want him living here you know he's crazy you know he's been in and out of jail he's doing this he's doing that so you know i just i just try to just focus on my music nowadays and not be that same person that i was before all right man so um is it guilty pleasure What'd you say? 
Is it guilty pleasure? Uh, yeah, a filthy pleasure. What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, what are your music guilty pleasures, man? What is something that we wouldn't expect you to listen to, but you wouldn't tell anybody, man? Like, something oh. like... Oh. <laughs> Uh, hold on, Brooke. Hold on, I'm in an interview right now. Uh, hold on, yeah. Uh, my bad, that was my niece asking me something. But yes, yes, Brooke. Uh, uh, but the music that I've that I've listened to that a lot of people wouldn't think I listen to, I listen to a lot of R&B. I love R&B music. Um, I love some rock music. Uh, I also listen to a little bit of alternative alternative rock, and a lot of people be like, "Oh, you know, why why would he be listening to that type of thing?" And uh, I just I just love all different types of music. I also listen to country sometimes. All right, man. So, um, what did you do outside of music? If you weren't doing music, what would you be doing? If I wasn't doing music, I'd uh, probably be just. Working at a restaurant somewhere or, you know, trying to become a football player, you know, because <laughs> I love football, too. You know, I, I got a good arm. I used to be a quarterback in high school before I got injured. So, you know, if I wouldn't have got injured, you know, I'd try to follow a career in football. So. Oh, yeah, man. So did you play for any colleges? No, I played for high school until I got injured. So I wasn't able to make it to college but i took my team in high school to the playoffs once and that's when i got injured i tore my acl and my meniscus and my knee and uh it kind of ended my football career so so was that the end of the season or did this happen like off season it it actually happened when we was going against uh i think it was uh notre dame high school uh we was in the playoffs and it happened in the third quarter i was getting ready to hike the ball and i you know i fell back to throw and uh i'd say about a 350 plus pound boy you know kid came up and hit me from behind and uh my knee buckled on me and that's how it happened and we had to replace it with the second string, so I had to sit out. Man, that's crazy. So was this your junior year? What did you say? Just your junior year? Like, what grade were you in when this happened? I was in the 11. Oh, okay. All right. All right, man. So what are the goals going into 2021? What what is okay? Twenty twenty one is gonna be the main year for me because that's when I'm gonna really try to get myself out there more, and I'm gonna try to seek fame through it, and that's what I want to do. I want to I want to I want to rap with more major artists. I want to rap with people like you know, dude. I would love to get on a song with Buster Rhymes or you know Twista or anybody that's still doing music nowadays. So, you know, I'm just wanting to get myself a little bit more heard in 2021, and I want to do more concerts, and I want to make more clothing uh, lines and stuff like that. I want to expand my business through my music. All right, man. All right. So um, what do you think about mainstream music right now? Uh, I think mainstream music is always good uh, to listen to, and uh, it's... I love mainstream music, uh, even though as much as I love underground music and what they bring forth in music, I, I really love mainstream music. And uh, I like how they write their songs. I like how they make themselves heard. And I, I wouldn't say I have any problem with mainstream music. All right, man. All right. So what is the best advice you've been given? My best advice I've been given was actually by another rapper. He said, do not give up. Keep going. Even even then, even when you have a piece of paper you want to tear up and throw away and you think the song's not going to be liked by somebody, somebody in this world is going to like that song. Don't always give up. Don't always get frustrated and throw, you know, your, your music you think is bad because somebody out there is going to like that. All right, man. All right, that's great advice, man. So, 
who would you say to any upcoming artist or band in your local area? I would have to say, keep trying, keep going for it, and sooner or later, it's going to pay off. Sooner or later, your music's going to get better. Uh, I would not give up one bit, no matter what anybody says. I'd keep going, and you will see the outcome sooner or later. You will be heard. All right, man. So um, from here on out, man, how is your music going to evolve? What can the audience expect from you, man? The audience and my supporters, they uh, they should expect from me would be um, just keep bringing forth great music, uh, keep making clothing, uh, keep doing what I have to do as an artist to make the fans and my supporters happy. All right, man, that's dope, man. So you got any special shout outs you want to give? Yeah, so I want to shout out Heartless Music Records for making this possible. I want to shout out my family and my friends, my fans, my supporters. And I want to shout out SKN for making this interview uh, possible. And I enjoyed it. And uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> you already know, Little Savage X, man. Go go peep his new EP, Savage God. Go um, listen to all his new releases. Singles, man. He's banging out on the tracks, man. He's got good things coming for him. Big shout out to Heartless Music for bringing this artist up front and personal to every one of the audience that gets to know him, man. This man is on fire. So, is there anything that I didn't speak on that you want to touch on right now, Big Dog? Yeah, I just want to say to the world, a savage is coming. And when I come, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep bringing forth the great music. All right, man. So uh, go ahead and plug in your music. Let everyone know where they can find you, your Twitter, your Facebook, all that good stuff, man. Yes, you can uh, You can follow me on Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Deezer, um, Audio Mac, YouTube, Instagram, uh, BandLab, and SoundCloud. And that is Little Savage Ed, right? Yep. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Little Savage Ed did his EP, Savage God. This is strictly for the music podcast. <laughs>